happy to see all of you here today, but not quite happy with the technical issues that we got. Okay, so now me, Gio, and my friend here, Giri, will walk you through to our journey to support 10,000 Argo CD apps. First, uh, yeah, you can find us on our social media. And a bit brief introduction to our company, GoTo Financial. This is the financial group of, of GoTo, the leading digital ecosystem in Indonesia. And then, uh, we want you to understand where we, are, where we are coming from. So, an overview about our Kubernetes clusters and our Argo CD setup. We have, we manage 50 Kubernetes clusters across different cloud providers in Singapore, Indonesia region. And we have even more than 30,000 pods running. And here is an Argo CD snapshot of our uh, observability monitoring tools. You can see that we already reached 11,000 Argo CD apps. Earlier this year, the number is only at 7,000. Only 7,000. And then as we onboard more teams to our platform, and consequently Argo CD as well, we grew and unfortunately Argo CD can keep up. Those 11,000 repositories consisted of 60,000 repositories. Yeah, 60,000 repositories. 60 projects, and it watches up more than 3,800 k total objects. And on our largest cluster alone, we have 2,000 applications and watches 40,000 objects. Uh, what we currently use is a centralized Argo CD model, where we have a single management cluster, where we install our own Argo CD, and it connects to a single Git provider, which is our GitLab instance. There are several pros using this simple model, which is easy to maintain. You are, the, the maintenance is only we upgrade the client library and the image version on one night. It's easy to integrate with our automation tool. We only need a single credential and single client library version. It's easy to manage the centralized RBAC on the policy.csv. And it's nice to have a single dashboard to view all of the resources across 50 clusters. Here, here, this is how we use Argo CD. We have our own developer platform called GoPassage. And we expose deployment API to developer, deployment functionality, so they can, so our tool generate manifest and commit it to Git repository. And some applications can share the same repository, where this, this Argo CD application will be pushed to each of their own Kubernetes cluster. And here is how we use the Argo CD, different Argo CD apps. We separate our service into two Argo CD apps, into country and stable app, where this is very easy for the developer to perform a more complicated deployment using country strategies perform promotion to, from the canary version to stable, and also perform rollback. Next, we also have separate applications for Istio Sidecar and Istio Gateway. And this is where we roll, we split, we perform traffic split, and also we can decouple the, function, the Istio Gateway and resources to another app. And it makes it very easy for our platform to perform the update separately, different from the way developer perform deployment. Next, um, oh, for our runtime components, we also leverage Argo CD. We have a mono repo. In this mono repo, we have a root app set, which generates app, the parent app for each clusters. On each cluster, they can have the base applications. They can have another app set to installs different components using Helm. And in case there is a difference between the base and the final manifest we want, we have a, a, an application using server-side apply patches. And this model also is used for all 50 different clusters. And by the way, we also install Argo CD using Argo CD. There are challenges to this simplicity. The first one is that 
we need to maintain connectivity to all 50 clusters that we manage. And sometimes using tunnels or peering doesn't work because of compliance or other reasons. We use public MTLS connect connectivity. There are also functionalities that that's challenging. We must okay, this is, must maintain unique application name globally, 63 charts. But this is actually outdated because uh, because we move from label identity to annotation identity. And 63 charts is a limitation of services, object, and helm. So I think this is no longer a problem, but we still pay the technical debts to have prefixes and suffixes in our Agusi app name. And more, this is also a single point of failure. And then we also face performance issue where slow recognition and sync happens. This is painful for our developer because they are the one who performs the deployment and sync. This is also reflected in the work you dev and Argo CDF reconcile bucket metrics. Okay, some of you already maybe felt it, that slow UI loading time. And we have also frequent server table server OM kills. Another issue is the high rate of Git API calls. This is reflected in some of the logs disconnection issue with our GitLab and also visible through Argo CD Git request total metrics. There are also issue of high repo cache miss and imbalance shards and noisy clusters. Next, my friend Giri will show you <coughs> our journey to, to tune the performance of our Argo CD instance. All right, let's talk about our journey in tuning the parameters and configurations of our Argo CD instance to scale and support uh, more than 10,000 apps that we have. As a refresher, uh, here's the Argo CD components. It's uh, Argo CD architecture. Basically, Argo CD consists of four different layers. First layer is the UI layer, which is the primary, uh, primary layer that the users are in track with the Argo CD systems. The layer contains a web app and the CLI. Second layer is the application layer that contains the API server or the Argo CD server, which serves requests coming from the web app and the CLI. The third layer is the core layer, which is the primary layer that serves the main responsibilities, the main functionalities of Argo CD systems. It contains the app controller, the app set controller, and the repo server. The app controller watches <coughs> application objects and reconciles. The app set controller generates application objects based on certain templates, and the repo server uh, serves manifest generation requests coming from the app controller and the Argo CD server. The last layer, the infra layer, is, uh, uh, contains the external uh, components that Argo CD depends on. There's Redis for caching purpose. There's Cube API that Argo CD used to watch Kubernetes objects and apply uh, changes. There's a uh, Git that contains the desired manifest that Argo CD refers to. And there's Dex, which contains uh, uh, authentication. Let's first talk about Argo CD server component. Uh, as we grow, we started receiving complaints from our Argo CD users that the dashboard is very slow. It, it, it has slow UI load. Uh, for us, uh, I, I believe if you started having more than 1,000 applications, you would start uh, facing the same problem. For us, uh, it took us up to two minutes in order to load the entire Argo CD UI dashboard, which is really a pain. To solve this, we enabled GZIP compression in the Argo CD server, and the impact was uh, really great. It uh, fastened up the load up time by 5x, and it reduced the data transfer from the server to browser by 7x smaller. Next is more of a tip on using the Argo CD UI dashboard. It's not really a tuning, it's not necessarily tuning. Uh, the Argo CD provides a feature called selectors. The selectors User can use selectors uh, to filter out applications based on labels, projects, uh, or namespaces. Uh, as can be seen by this screenshot, as an example, we selected uh, one project and one namespace. Instead of loading up the entire 10,000 application objects in the home page, uh, this was just a subset of those applications, and it loads up quite instantly, under one second. And what's nice is that the selectors are saved the next time we load up, load up the Argo CD UI, which is quite handy for the users. Next is about Kubernetes CPU limits. This is more on uh, tuning on the Kubernetes side, so we can also apply this outside of Argo CD use case. 
uh, as we grow, we started seeing a lot of our agrocity components got CPU throttle. As can be seen by our monitoring dashboard, we started seeing CPU saturation as can see, be seen by the spikes, especially during the, uh, the peak hours and when the number of synchronizations get uh, high. So uh, Kubernetes implements the CPU request and limit using C-group mechanism. And the C-group mechanism is based on the CFS or completely fair scheduler by the Linux kernel. The CFS guarantees or throttle CPU utilization uh, based on the proportions of the container shares. Or in the C-group uh, terminology, it's called CPU shares and CPU quota on that particular node. We don't have much time to talk more about this, but it's a pretty deep and interesting topic. If you're interested, you can uh, see the attached references. Uh, with this, we decided to leave off the CPU limit. So in, especially in our app controller, we don't use CPU limit at all. We only use the, uh, the, CPU, uh, the, the CPU request in Kubernetes. The result, we no longer uh, see CPU saturation and the components can use up the remaining uh, available CPUs in particular node. Let's move on to the repo server. As Gio mentioned, uh, as our number of repositories grow, we started seeing the repo server got OM killed quite frequently at that time. So the repo server fork and exec the Git processes. So if you enter exec uh, into the repo server, you would see a bunch of Git uh, processes there, as well as the template generators like Helm and Customize. And this consumes uh, memory. As we scale, uh, the repo server consumes a lot of memory and got OM killed. To scale this, it's a, it's a classic solution. We increase the replicas of the repo server and enable uh, HPA or horizontal pod auto scaling and, pod, uh, and, and put the memory utilization as a target. With this, we distribute more memory uh, requests to, uh, across uh, multiple uh, replicas of repo server. As an alternative, there's actually a feature in repo server. There's a flag called parallelism limit, which will uh, control how many manifest generation requests can be performed in parallel per pod, per repo server pod, and this avoids OM kills. However, there's a trade-off that uh, we would be having a lower throughput of manifest generation as we set the parallelism limit. Uh, as I mentioned also earlier, uh, the, Argo CD, the, app, the Argo CD server and the controller talks to the repo server for manifest generation requests. Right? Um, as we grow, we started seeing a, a bunch of timeout errors from our logs. To, 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 uh, to solve this, uh, we have to tune the client timeout uh, configurations in both the app controller and the server components. We really need to set it up in both because we we thought by setting up uh, only in one component it would solve the problem, but we really, need, we really need to set it up in both components. And then we started, uh, we, we encountered a problem with a persistent high Git fetch request, putting pressure to our, our Git infrastructure, uh, and it's coming from the repo server. So Argo CD catches the generated manifest into the Redis, and by default, it has a default expiry time of 24 hours. When the manifest remote file changes in the repository, even though the repository tag hasn't changed, so for instance, if our users uh, apply changes and it doesn't change the tag in the repository, or in the case of uh, Helm manifest, it's, it's still behind the same Helm chart version or Helm tag version, uh, the, a shorter expiry time is, is preferable. So the repo server can pick up update quicker than 24 hours. However, for our case, the remote files references are already hermetic, which means we always do forward fixes and forward patches and, and increase the versions of the, the repository. In this case, for our case, we can uh, use a higher expiry time. So uh, after applying this, uh, we see dramatic decrease in our git request total uh, metrics quite significantly. Next is about monorepo. Our monorepo, as Gio mentioned, uh, uses app of apps pattern and the apps app feature of Argo CD. Additionally, we also use the multi-sources app feature by Argo CD, which would allow one application to refer to multiple directories 
in, in the same repository with different generation strategies. So one directory can be plain Kubernetes manifest, the other one can be Helm, and, and, and things like that. Uh, this feature uh, puts up very high git fetch and git ls remote requests, again putting pressure to our, our git infrastructure. We've investigated it, and we found out that this was potentially a bug in Argo CD. So we discussed with the Argo CD, there's an Argo CD uh, six scalability uh, group also in, in the community. We implemented an undocumented workaround. <laughs> so if you're interested, uh, please look at the GitHub issue. After applying this uh, undocumented workaround, actually, yeah, that one, the, the red highlighted lines are the undocumented workaround. Right now it's an open issue. But in, 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 the, in Kubecon US, we brainstorm uh, uh, a solution with the maintainers. We found that solution. Uh, I hope the fix, I think the fix is going uh, soon. After applying the workaround, the git fetch requests drop very dramatically on the, on the right screenshot. However, we are still seeing a very high LS remote requests, and the bug issue is still, is still open. The monorepo, usually if you have monorepo in Argo CD, uh, you would want to use the webhook integration as well. The monorepo, because it contains multiple uh, application objects, if there's a change in one of the directories, it would trigger Argo CD to refresh all the applications that refer to the same repository, even though those changes are not related at all. So in the refresh process, Argo CD invalidates uh, the catch for all applications and call Kubernetes API to annotate every single application with uh, some special annotations. And this process is a network bound process which slows down the entire Argo CD update process. Especially uh, it's impacting reconciliation performance when you have more than 1,000 applications. There's a feature in Argo CD uh, through the annotation called manifest generate path we can filter out the directories or the manifests that are not related uh, at all to the applications. They speed up uh, the update process of our Argo CD. Let's move to the app controller component. So the app controller component uh, uses two kind of queues for reconciliation and synchronization purposes. As we grow, we started uh, seeing our work queue depth piling up, but it never went down at all. This means there are more works uh, pushed to the queue, but the number of consumers or processors are less. Uh, those workers or processors are called operation processors and status processors in Argo CD. We need to tune or increase the number of processors, so there are more consumers of the task. Uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, for every 1,000 application, we set 50 status processors and 25 operation processors. And then the app controller uh, can be scaled. The, this app controller is horizontally shardable. shardable. We, can, uh, we can scale based on shards, and the sharding algorithm in Argo CD is on the cluster level, which means uh, different clusters can get assigned to different uh, shards, app controller shards. Uh, to set it up, it's pretty straightforward. We increase the number of replicas of uh, app controller and set the environment variable. With this, we distribute uh, the workloads, the reconcile and syncing workloads to, uh, to, to different pods, different shards. After implementing shards, we started seeing the shards are consuming CPU utilization uh, unevenly. So there's an un in imbalance uh, CPU consumption across the shards. Some shards consume higher CPU than the other shards. So Argo CD, because Argo CD shards per cluster, not per app, Technically, um, the largest clusters can be assigned to the same shard. And likewise, smaller clusters can get assigned to the same shard as well, creating an um, imbalance uh, workload and creates cluster noisy problem. And the Argo CD released new sharding algorithm called round robin uh, sharding algorithm. But this might not help much either, because there's still a chance that the largest cluster can get assigned to the same shard. So to solve this issue, we did manual shard allocation uh, to fine tune the shard resources. So we ensure through this manual allocation, we ensure our largest clusters are spread across the shards. And to do this, we simply uh, apply secret object in Argo CD. There's a shard number that we can apply from there. After applying this from the screenshot, we can start seeing uh, the, the, the CPU utilizations are more even, evenly spread across the shards. Um, there's an 
open discussion, GitHub uh, discussion, uh, that we think Argo CD on the app level will be better than the cluster level. After all this tuning, we still see the app controller still consumes very high uh, CPU utilization. And we think uh, this also impacts uh, some of the reconciliation still can be uh, improved. So Argo CD watches uh, all the field changes of all the projects, all the objects that, they, that it tracks. So some Kubernetes fields uh, could be very concise or frequently updated, dynamically updated by the Kubernetes. So things like uh, Kubernetes status, resource version, those are the fields that Kubernetes dynamically generates and updates, but we don't really define them in the desired manifest. Those dynamic or frequently updated fields, uh, we call it high churn objects, which trigger uh, unnecessary reconciliations and, and, and consumption of the app controller. In the recent 2.8 version, there's a feature called ignore resource updates and ignore differences. We can use this feature to filter out <coughs> all the fields that are not related, we, we don't really care. So from the left hand side, the example, we uh, decided to ignore the HPA annotations, the replica set annotations, the endpoint slice fields and annotations, which are pretty noisy and uh, yeah, which are pretty noisy. And we also ignored the status uh, field. Note that if you implement custom controllers, you might re rely on the status uh, field. Uh, uh, please be careful also. But for our use case, uh, we, we don't really need the status fields in all the Kubernetes objects. As can be seen, the, the result was quite, quite amazing. It reduced the CPU utilization by almost half, almost half here. For a re relatively simple feature with this um, amazing impact, uh, it's really great. Shout out to the Argo City maintainers for making this happen. Our last problem that we encountered was related to Argo City API client library. So as uh, Gio mentioned in the keynote this morning, we have internal developer platform and our internal platform uses the Argo City API client library to interact with the Argo City servers. As we scale, we started seeing HTTP go away errors from our platform. We investigated it, and we found out there's a bug in this upstream uh, API client library when using gRPC web mode true. Uh, we fixed this in upstream, and uh, yeah, right now it's, it's already fixed. Uh, I think it's going to be in 2.10 or above that. Um, also, one, one note. Um, if our users are using Argo CD CLI, even though the gRPC web mode is not set explicitly, it may fall back gRPC web mode true. Uh, if, you, if you are using it, please check your Argo CD config file in your local machine. As an alternative, we can use the native gRPC to talk to Argo CD server as opposed to the gRPC web mode uh, to avoid this issue. Next, uh, Gio is going to talk how we can further improve our existing Argo CD setup. Now that we have taken a good look to how we manage Argo CD and identify this problem, there are several approaches that we want to explore. The first one is the decentralized model. This is completely opposite of what we already have, using okay, each Argo CD instance in each clusters. It offers a couple of advantages. The first one is the application control workload now is distributed across clusters. This makes it very easy to scale, more easy to scale. And then the access to Kubernetes API now is limited to local only, no longer maintaining connectivity from the management clusters. This makes it better security practice and narrow down our attack surface. But, but yeah, there are also trade-offs using this, using this approach. First one is we lose our easier maintenance and upgrade headache. We, we are consistent of a small platform engineering team, so we already have a lot to upgrade greatest clusters and the still mess inside. So now we want to avoid this kind of maintenance burden. Another one is to avoid automation header where we maintain several different versions of Argo CD client versions. And then we will lose 
the centralized dashboard because now that we have each Argo CD versions, each Argo CD instance in each clusters, we will have 50 different Argo CD dashboards. And as you know that we have a single largest cluster, then we still need tuning regardless on that clusters because the size is different. Besides the centralized model, we also look up into agent-based Argo CD or the hybrid model. This is pioneered by Acuity, and as you can see, it has a distributed controller where the workload is spread evenly, more distributedly, and a single control panel, centralized control panel to view all resources throughout the workload clusters. We hope similar model is also supported in the community versions. And in fact, progress has been made. So there is a, the first is the optional feature, feature, optional pull mechanism for application set. So that the application set in the remote clusters can generate applications in that own clusters and the Argo CD instance in that cluster can reconcile on its own. The second one is the issue of issue for centralized UI for multiple Argo CD instances. Yeah, we can track these issues numbers to see where the future for this model in community versions. Another nice thing to add is the server-side pagination. This is already there on Acuity's version, and I believe they are planning to bring it upstream, and they are targeting version 2.10 for the release. And we want to say thank you for, and since we are heavily inspired from the work being done in TikTok, Adobe from Alex and the amazing Argo CD documentations. And that's it. Uh, we still have time for questions. Thank you. Okay, now the questions time. Okay, any questions? Okay, in front. Can anyone please give the mic? I think you could go to the mic in the center. I think there is a mic in the ISO. Questions, please go to the aisle mic and use the microphone. Okay. Go to the ISO, yeah. Um, may I ask a question about the, um, you, you mentioned you optimize the UI low, right? The what, sorry? Um, the Argo CD UI low because okay, as okay. we have like uh, more than 10,000 applications, the UI load is quite slow. Yes. I'd like to know, have you done any um, like customer patch uh, on Argo CD to solve the questions or just use some like GZIP? Okay, the answer is, uh, have we done anything custom to optimize the UI load of Argo CD? That's I, I think we, ha are, we have, um, we encounter the same problem, but yeah, our situation may worsen than you guys. Um, I'm, I'm from TikTok, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the presentation is shared by my previous leader and uh, equity uh, C CTO. Um, yeah, our, our questions are more tough. Um, for example, our UI loading time uh, is like three minutes, three minutes. Uh, for the first, um, for, for first, uh, when we've, uh, the, for, the initial list, for example, uh, when, we, when we need to lead, uh, load the UI, the, in, the initial list is cost like maybe 20 seconds, and the yes. UI load is um, almost about three minutes. And after the caching, uh, you know, the, the, they will cache all the RBAC results. Uh, after caching, the load is like maybe 20 seconds, and the UI load is still uh, more than one minute. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to know, have you guys done any improvements on that? Oh, so the answer is we haven't done anything custom. We relied on the gzip compression, and then uh, because we, so for us, we don't necessarily allow the users to open the home page entirely because we, uh, we, we have a UI portal, dev portal in our platform that links to uh, the Argo CD applications that the each team owns. So with with this uh, linking, right, we don't necessarily link, give users redirection to the homepage, to the size homepage. So it's like we can control the filters oh, from see, our platform. 
and let's say the filters we filter it, uh, based on teams or based on s certain ad groups. So we we don't allow like ten thousand objects in that homepage. Okay, okay. That, that's but how we, we do it. But we don't do any, cases, any patches. In our cases, our users just bookmark all the links. They ah, true. <laughs> yeah, we've seen yeah. that also. That behavior also. Um, for but, we're over on time already, so we All can right. continue the questions offline, okay? Uh, let's we have to move to the next session. Thank you so much.